Now we have a self-proclaimed loyal viewer, Robert hey, Magnetta. Don't know if you will be able to help. I built my first Intel-based computer about a year and a half ago now after building only AMD-based systems, and a friend asked me how hot my E6600 processor was running since I'm running Ubuntu on the system. I never thought twice to check. Knowing that this processor is known to run as hot as 50 degrees, I expected a high reading, so I installed LM sensors, etc., and I saw that in system monitor, my CPU at idle, nothing running excluding background processes, that it was at 70% of capacity, and the sensors showed 95 mm. degrees. Wow, I thought it might have been the motherboard, so I swapped it out with a new board, different brand, etc., and thought maybe it had to do with running 32-bit on a 64-bit capable processor, so made the change up to 64-bit. At the same time, now, under the same conditions, system monitor never goes above 50% CPU usage, but the sensors are still giving me a temperature of 83 degrees. I also have tried a range of coolers, the stock cooler, and a few cooler master coolers with no great success. Can you suggest what I should try looking at next, please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I probably went through that with my first quad as well. Mm. It really, I mean, it often is going to boil down to the coolers. When you installed LM sensors, make sure you run sensors detect, get the right uh, the sensors uh, activated, the modules for your for your device. But I think you're, you're, you need to know if that if those temperatures are, are true, because if those temperatures are true, then it's it's running a lot hotter than you want it to be, especially for for good performance. You want to keep that thing a lot cooler than that. Mine runs it. I've got a, qu a quad core, just a Q6600. Uh, so it's got the it's got the four cores at 2.4 gigahertz instead of yours, which is the two cores, and it runs at 34 degrees mm. with the liquid cooling system. So. But when I had a V1 on that thing, which is a great big uh, fan uh, from Vantech, I believe it was. Pretty sure. Before I start spouting <laughs> names and serial numbers and models and things. Mm -hmm. But regardless, y y you get a, a really good CPU cooler on these dual core and quad core processors. The out of the box OEM stuff is probably no good for you. The stuff that comes with them. I mean, it's it's almost useless. It's pointless that they include them. Usually, maybe it's because you know the office user is not going to be running a high temperature on those uh, processors. But if you've got you know dual core, quad core processor, you don't want to be running it too too hot. It can handle it, I'm sure. But workhouse is at full usage. My overclocked Q6600 doesn't go over 60 Celsius. Yeah, and that's overclocked. So I, I don't like those numbers. I don't think that, I mean, we can look up for you. You want to, you know, double check, because a lot of processors can, can simply handle that temperature. I mean, you're, you're not pushing too, too high. But, like I say, mine's down at 34 degrees. And you're going to get better performance the cooler the processor is, as long as you don't put it at sub-zero. Yeah, I can't find my old fan, but uh, you want to get something that's much better than a stock fan, for sure. Uh, I've got the the thermal take uh, liquid cooling system running in my in my chassis, and that bumped it down. Like the one that I had was really good, the the CPU cooler. You can see that when I installed the uh, the liquid cooling system, uh, but it, and it ran at about 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. So I don't know. Probably definitely recommend uh, rechecking what your cooler device is. But get get a ther you know if you're not sure if the th if the thermal monitoring is is accurate get one of those little laser devices that'll you know wirelessly tell you what the temperature of the processor is get it right at the bottom of the block and see uh, see if you can get a better reading of the of the temperature. Sorry, I don't have a real answer for you, but it's you know going from cooler to cooler I think is but just get a good one get a real good one. Something with lots of airflow. Check the airflow in your chassis too. That's another thing. I mean, I should address that. If you've got a lot of wires that are all tangled up in your in your chassis, and you've got no airflow, even that, though that fan is blowing down on that processor, and I assume that the fan is clean, there's no dust in it. Uh, even though that's blowing down, there's no airflow, so you're not getting any cool air blowing down onto the uh, onto the heat sink. So that's another thing that you want to look at. Mm. But cooling is very very important. Mm. Warcow is suggesting check the temperature in your BIOS. Might be a good way to uh, check your temps as well. Check the airflow of your chassis. Make sure that there's good airflow. Very important. 
It may even mean putting a chassis fan on the back of your chassis, something like that. Mm. Any other suggestions in the chat room? If I kind of hopefully pointed you in the right direction? You know what, Jagas is making a really good point, just mentioning that some of the Core 2 chips uh, require a BIOS update in order to report the temperatures correctly. And mm. you know what I was saying when I first touched this, I was like, I, I thought I saw this on one of my earlier processors. I think that's exactly what I did, is I changed the, uh, the firmware on my BIOS. So it might be another thing to, to try. And gadget wisdom, time to blow out dust from the server. Yeah. Well, like, he, like I say, I think that because he's changed out the, the heat sink a few times, it's probably not a dust issue. Well, no, but it's a, a good uh, reminder for all of us. I'm just oh, thinking while we're discussing yeah. all this, I'm thinking, yeah. mm, when was the last time I cleaned my um Oh, dear, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because well, these fans, right, they, they, I don't know if I have anything I can show you. Not really. But the fans draw air. So cool air in. And it goes over the capacitors and everything and keeps everything cool. This is on mm. your computer. So your power supply, everything, it's drawing in or blowing out air. It's drawing it in from somewhere, right? So it's pulling in all the dust at the same time. Right. So if you don't get that dusted out, eventually it's going to clog. Mm -hmm. And that happens to your CPU. That happens to your power supply. And when it happens, you can burn out peripherals. So uh, you would want to probably clean out your, your, the dust issues on your computer in a normal environment once a year should do. But just kind of keep an eye, and if you see dust accumulating on the outside of your chassis around the fans, then uh, you know that it's, it's time to perhaps get that looked at. If you w are in a dusty environment where it's necessary to do it uh, more often, you might look at that about every six months. It really depends on the environment. Just never let it build up, that's all. Right. Okay. What did you go to? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I've been too helpful, but hopefully... We're pointing in the right direction. Helpful. I hope. I mm -hmm. hope you figure it out. Let us know, okay? Yeah. Thanks. R.D. Blair wants me to mention core temp, which you can use to tell the temperature of your core. AlCPU.com. That's AlCPU.com slash core temp with a capital C and a capital T. I'll post the links in the show notes just for you. All right, R.D. Blair? Thanks. It's Vista ready. Excellent.